Hello once again, and I'm happy to have you on Delight Channel. Every week we are here to share a video with you that we think is going to help you on along your journey. And then what have we been talking about over the last couple of weeks? We have been talking about change and change management. And I just think that before we go too far, because it seems as if we are speaking a lot of English, sharing a lot of theories, it's good to take a, a step back to situate again the context of change and why it is so important. Why should you really worry about change management? Why should it be your business? Why are we spending so many weeks digging around it and digging around it? It's because if you don't change, you get changed. The only constant thing in, in life is change. And in this uh, world, the rate at which things are changing is so fast. So, any organization that is not changing means it's not growing. And if it is not growing, it means it is going to die. Therefore, as we focus on this entrepreneurial side of change and change management, it is something you really need to slow down and create capacity for in your organization. I say it to you clearly, it is not the strongest species that survive. It is the most adaptable ones that survive. So, if you want to, if you look forward to building a sustainable enterprise, which is what actually makes you an entrepreneur, then you need to pay attention to change and change management. And it is in that spirit that we are continuing what we've been saying. And then, um, what are we jumping on this week? I feel very strongly that it is necessary to focus a bit more on the human side of change. The whole noise and the whole conversation around change and change management is because human beings are involved. I say it again, if you build a building and you say, okay, I don't want it this tall, I don't want it this narrow, or I want this inside and that outside, and you start demolishing to reconstruct, there will be no resistance. If it is an equipment that you want to change, even before you start using, there will be no resistance. But once the, you bring in the human side to it, all of a sudden, everything becomes very complicated. And as you will see in some of the uh, future um, content we are going to share, it can get so bad that people will actually commit suicide. I'm, I'm telling you facts of what has happened. And in, in a couple of videos, we will get to those, to those content. If you don't manage change very well, it can lead to depression. It can lead to physical and mental health complications. A lot of things can happen when change go wrong. Organizations can die. Investment of many years can be equated to zero simply because change is not properly managed. And that is why, as we speak about change, my men don't ever forget that all the hues and cry, all the principles and theories we are sharing is just because of the human being. And therefore, if it has to do with the human side, then let's take a few more minutes to dwell on that side of the conversation. And what are we saying? We are saying that as long as human beings are involved, don't ever take change for granted, small or big. Secondly, don't ever forget that different people will react differently to change. If you remember what we shared about the different types of people when it comes to change management, remember the active resistor, the passive resistor, the rank and file, and the change agent. These people will always be included in your change one way or the other. Therefore, you need to be aware that they are there and that knowledge helps you to manage how that goes. Again, you need to remember that when you are dealing with change and you are dealing with the human being, the change reaction, now I'm beginning to use another word, Yes, change the reaction, we go through different phases. So let me step back and learn certain things. I've used two broad concepts. I've used the concept of the change phase. That is what? Unfreeze, change, and refreeze. I've also used the concept of the steps, which is the seven. I'm not going to go through that so it doesn't look like I'm reteaching that. Now, I am talking about change reactions. 
it goes through a cycle and that is what is called the change curve. This change curve is a theory that has its roots in psychology because it was initially propounded by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. That theory was initially situated in the concept and in the context of loss and grieving. She actually did this research around when people lose their loved ones. How do they deal with it? What are the emotions that they feel? And then how does it progress to whether they come out of it properly or they never come out of it? As that theory got very general and um, rave review that became accepted, he then slowly found his way into the, into the world of industrial psychology where it was now applied to the concept of change. And what can we learn when we think of the change curve? What the change curve says is that every time there is a change, again, there are three distinct phases that happens in the change curve journey. What are these three phases? The first is the phase of shock and denial. Okay? The second is the phase of anger and depression. And the third is the phase of integration and acceptance. What are we saying? Timak has come again with these confusing layers. What I'm saying is that Anytime you introduce change, remember it has to do with the human being. But when you announce it in that crowd, there are different types of people. But whoever they are, they go through different phases in this change curve before they are able to properly navigate themselves to the other side. Why? We are too attached to the familiar. We want to stay with what we know that's why sometimes you hear things like the devil you know is better than the angel that you do not know. We are too addicted to the familiar. We want to hold it down. We want to try and, and, and make sure it doesn't move. But like we said, the only constant thing in life is change. So when we talk about these three phases in the change curve, what does it mean? What are the triggers? What are the reactions? How then, as a well-informed entrepreneur or as a well-trained change manager, how can you respond appropriately all in the name of ensuring that what you set out to do is achieved and the change doesn't get derailed? These are the questions we are going to answer in the next video. I am so sure you don't want to miss it. Spread the word. Feel free to share this video. Let us know how we are hitting you. And if there is still something that is not clear, as, we have, as we've always been saying, let us know and gladly we'll respond to you. So, make it the next week as we dive deeper into the change curve. And until then, please don't ever forget that all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. Tim Mark is my name and I'll see you next week. Bye.